Hello and welcome back to Kelman Explores. We are pulling in to the nation of Malta here, to Valletta, Malta, which is the capital and the port. It was probably my favorite place in the Mediterranean that I've been to so far. So let's see what we end up doing. Thank you. What a beautiful way to get going. Crisp, cool air, Mediterranean sun, and pulling up to the nation of Malta on the MSC World Europa on our very long balcony. It is 7.30 here and we are coming into port in Malta and I'm filming because this is the emptiest I've seen this area of the cruise ship. I think everybody's upstairs eating breakfast, but it is nice and empty and I am coming to get some supplies for our day in port. Coffee. Absolutely beautiful. It looks so ancient. Looks like some sort of fortification and they're trying to fix it or renovate it, restore it. Good morning everybody, Good morning. my name is Daniela, I'll be your guide together with Raymond, our driver and we're going to explore uh, two sides of the island. We're going to venture first of all in Medina, which is the old fortified city of the island, where we'll visit the cathedral dedicated to St. Paul, and then later we return back to Valletta, where we go and to see the Co Cathedral. Um, if any of you would like to stay later in, this, in the city, Valletta is literally on top of our heads. So if you look on the right, hand side there is a um, elevator i will explain everything later and the elevator brings you down to the harbor so it's very very easy um if you would like to stay back in the city later on but malta i like to give a small history info about the island in malta we have the oldest freestanding temples in the world uh, the oldest of them one is in gozo because the maltese archipelago is formed of three main islands malta the larger island gozo which is slightly smaller and in the middle there is also camino only two people live on camino We are on our way to Medina, the old fortified city. And fun fact, this is the Gate of the Gods, season one of Game of Thrones. Filmed here, a lot of the exterior shots. That was me trying to reenact that scene. And here we are about to enter the Gate of the Gods. Oh yeah, I could see it kind of, definitely. The walls. I wonder how much money it takes to, uh, Shut this down. Look at how beautiful that is. The gold color of it. I got yeah. Look at this. Can I get a like from all the Game of Thrones fans out there? Come on, I know you like this. Well, here we are walking the ancient streets of Medina, the small fortified ancient city on the island of Malta, the island nation of Malta. And like I said earlier, this is where a lot of the exterior shots and some of the scenes were filmed for season one of Game of Thrones. So this was like a double whammy for me in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea on an ancient 
culture's island, civilization. And I'm walking the streets of King's Landing. Uh, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, I recommend coming here and seeing like where it all kind of started the first season. We are on our way to the church. St. Paul's Cathedral or the Medina Cathedral. It's a Catholic cathedral dedicated to St. Paul the Apostle. And there is the exterior there. It is stunning, very stunning. Let's go in and take a look. So the cathedral was founded in the 12th century and according to tradition it stands on the site of where Roman governor Publius met St. Paul following his shipwreck on Malta. The original cathedral was severely damaged in 1693 from the Sicily earthquake so it was dismantled and rebuilt in the Baroque style that you see right now. And it was the design of the Maltese architect Lorenzo Gaffa between 1696 and 1705, that's how long it took to build, the cathedral is regarded as Gaffa's masterpiece. And as you look around here, this right here was interesting because the significance of this painting, it has like an Easter egg. I'm zooming in on the harbor there underneath the scene above and basically asking for God and Mary to protect the harbor and he who controls and protects the harbor, controls Malta and the Mediterranean. Coffee shop, restaurant in Medina, Malta. Depending on the setting, I could definitely see Game of Thrones uh, being here. If you look around. When in Malta, you act like a Maltesian some lemon I just had some fresh squeezed orange juice and I'm just enjoying the view here in Malta beautiful view So this whole section that we're walking in, in Valletta, is fairly new and was built to have a very massive and big open presence. That's the, like, the administration, like the government house, and it's real modern and it has inter interesting effects. And that right there is the remains of the ancient opera house. Uh, it is kind of being worked on, but it's still a place where there's shops, vendors, and open concerts. 
we are walking through the streets of Valletta and here we are about to go to our next church this is St. John's Co-Cathedral and it was that it is dedicated to John the Baptist it was built between 1573 and 1578 it was officially consecrated on the 20th of February 1578 with a Mannerist style for the exterior and Baroque interior it is made out of limestone and has works of a couple of well-known artists and artisans inside I did love the interior of this church I found it fascinating how the carvings and everything was gilded there's so much gilding in the Mediterranean and I I like that like why not put gold on everything and each of the little chapels to the little nooks in the corners here were totally de like decorated differently and had you know another place to worship or a different dedication and since this was Catholic and older all the crypts and stuff on the ground there there are no women buried here because of course back in the day they were not allowed to we are slowly making our way to the Caravaggio kind of wing where two of his famous works are there and they're in great condition they're from 1607 and 1608 respectively uh, they're very impressive and we'll show you that in one second but first let's listen to some of the bells from inside as the bells were tolling outside in the tower <laughs> Well, that was impressive nothing like a good old bell toll here we are entering the Caravaggio wing I hope I'm saying his uh, name right but he's a famous artist and while he was in Malta he painted two famous paintings in this room um, amongst others but the one in the foreground the big ominous one is the, is the beheading of Saint John the Baptist and he's also famous for in this wing a painting called Saint Jerome writing uh, which I don't think I showed that but it might pan around and we might see it but just research them they're real famous and priceless paintings you've probably seen them in different art books or if you study art but uh, let's go back outside and take a look at the bell tower and the exterior the back side and let's talk to some of our favorite friends in Malta Oh my gosh, how do they know? Look! Look at the little one. Did they steal it from her? They no. did. Really? Oh yeah. Or it's like oh no, she's dirty. holding it up. Oh. No, something's wrong with it. It looks swollen. See how she just did it? Yeah, she's limping. Why don't they get stepped on? Maybe. Hi. I like their little noises. Wow, this little looks good. As you can see here, pardon the different style of video here. This was meant to be on TikTok, but I wanted to include this. Uh, Brittany, we stopped by and we bought this for five euro, and I think we did lose it actually on the trip. But pretty cool way uh, for people with long hair, men or women, to make a quick bun and uh, she liked it and I thought it looked beautiful and this guy this group this husband and wife team they were selling these good 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 quality stuff we're here in Malta and we just finished our tour we are uh, kind of hanging around where the ship is the ship is like right behind us well it's over this way up over there and there's an elevator that'll take you down there 
So we broke away uh, kind of towards the end of the tour during a point in the tour where you're allowed to. And that way we can do our self-guided kind of walk around, look for stuff. And it's a beautiful, very historic town. We went to Medina, which is a small city in a different part of Malta. Uh, right now we are in Valletta, which is another city. This is where you port, or the capital, actually, I guess. And Malta is a very small nation onto itself. And Medina is where they filmed King's Landing and Game of Thrones for the first season of Game of Thrones. And it's very cool to walk through there. And we got a small bite and learned some of the actual history there, not the fantasy. But it's still neat to see some place that I've seen on uh, shows like that. And even this harbor, this port looks very much like it could have been used. What about you? What did you think about today? No, it's pretty cool. So we learned that it is a very small island right. country that is considered like the, um, the gateway to Africa. So it's a very sought after. You know, it's an area that a lot of countries have tried to conquer because of trying to get to Africa. It is very small, so there's like, I think she said 500,000 residents um, here on the island, so it's it is true. very small, um, but really rich in culture and really rich in history. There is so much around here. Uh, the other thing that we learned that I found really interesting, which made a lot of sense going back to the whole gate to Africa thing, is that this was the most bombed um, oh, yeah. nation during World War II because people this was really sought after. They wanted to have that bridge um, to connect the European countries to Africa. Oh, for it trade was a British colony then too. So yes, British kind of took it over, and yeah, everybody Britain didn't like over. the British in this area back yeah. then. And if you look around um, certain parts of the uh, city, you'll see the red telephone booths, um, like the the London, oh, yeah. the, the ones you see in London, and then also the uh, post office boxes, uh, the red ones. And she said that they leave them because they like to just you know remember that at one time this was True. a British colony they have um, since I don't know the appropriate term but you know um, became an independent separated. nation yeah. I guess seceded um, became a, its own yeah. sovereign nation yeah. um, so that was really interesting so there is there's so much here um, the King's Landing thing was a surprise we actually yeah. did not know that I didn't um, know that I want to research it a little bit more because she had mentioned that there was some kind of conflict between um, the country uh, or the city that it was filmed in and the production company. Oh, so yeah. I'm interested to know what the team And that's why they went to Croatia, I think, yep. after the first season. I don't know. It's really cool here. Uh, what's also really interesting about this is that not only do they speak English, it is their second language that's taught in school here, um, but they. she was mentioning that a lot of the uh, like millennial generations and older speak a lot of Italian because all they could watch growing up was oh, Italian yeah. television because they didn't have like Netflix or any other um, channels. But their um, their language is uh, Maltese, Maltese, which is a mix of Italian and Arabic. And Arabic. So that was really interesting. And so yeah, there's um, definitely when we're looking through stuff, if you're reading it just in Maltese, I don't yeah, know if I'm saying I think, that right. I think you're saying that um, right. That I can't understand it, but luckily everything is like also done in English. Very beautiful very city, yeah. and we recommend it. Probably even a stay without a cruise. Yeah. Very Mediterranean feeling here. Like I, it's in the 60s now. It's a little chilly in the shade, but it's perfect weather. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's Sun is out. It's beautiful it's out here. Really, really, really pretty. So yeah, definitely come if you have the opportunity and the just the overlook into the city is so beautiful and then of course being right here on the beaches and it has kind of that like california feel to it yeah too, you're right there's that, certain the like climate. cliffs and cli yeah the climate like there's so much so. there was kind of cliffy areas coming in well anyway that's our little message from alta let's continue exploring so we are walking around some more of the government buildings and we made it on top of a park it's kind of an arid park or a dry climate park as you can see but it is on top of the fortifications that look down to the harbor and then on the other side you can see our cruise ship the MSC World Europa it was very windy so I turned down the volume and I'm doing a voiceover because even our mics when I wore them it, they, it was very windy but it made it beautiful it was so comfortable and sunny I really did enjoy Malta, we both did. And I totally want to go back. Look at our ship, the MSC World Europa, and right before that in the foreground is the other park on top of the fortifications here. 
we are actually really high up and we are going to take the elevator down after we eat there's a ship the world you can i hold it they have a much different look almost like a wildness to them so reviewing this footage it is really windy and it does not sound good so i am going to do a voiceover Brittany is saying right now this is kinney this is a local uh soda kind of a bitter semi-sweet orange peel kind of tasting soda and there is a meat pie there and then she has a meat pot like a empanada almost and this is the Aperol Spritz. This is a popular drink in Europe, but also mainly in the Mediterranean. It's usually around five euros and it is alcoholic and it has that same kind of bitter, semi-sweet orange peel kind of taste. And I feel like it's almost probably made with the Kinney soda, but I don't think it is. She is going to try it for the first time. She's remarking, and I told her she probably won't like it, but then she's like, no, it's not bad. But then she's like, yeah, it does have a little bit of bitterness. Yeah, actually, I don't like it that much, but it's okay. It's a, it's a good thing to just sip on and look at the view. It is stunning here. This is the elevator. You can take it up and down and one euro gets you a round trip. They give you a ticket whichever way you get on going up or down and you keep that for your return ticket. Uh, it is only in cash. We did not see the tap and go working. They did have it but it was not working. Luckily we had a few euro coins and as you can see it is quite a high distance and it saves you about a 20 to 25 minute walk to the ship's location and now it's time for an ancient street walk break with Kelman Just got some souvenirs out of here. It's a little mobile souvenir bus. And I guess he travels to all these places. Italy, Malta, England, Germany, France. Reasonably priced too. I got uh, three magnets for four euros. Getting back on board, but look at the Easter egg. Uh, let's see here. Look at that silhouette there in the globe. At first I thought it was peeling, but it's the silhouette of the world Europa. We are back on board the MSC World Europa and we are looking down at the port in Malta, in Valletta, Malta, from our stateroom balcony and we are looking for pier runners. We did see some. Those of you who don't know, a pier runner is somebody who is running to the ship as it leaves or it's about to leave because they lollygagged. We had an all back on board time at 4.30 p.m. We were sailing at 5 p.m. and right now it is about 4.25 p.m. And this lady here, I will stop talking soon, but she fell right off that curb and was quickly helped up and she made it on in one piece. But I'm gonna be quiet so we can listen to our past selves worry and also get angry at people we don't know for taking this pretty not serious. Okay, are these the two we saw? No. No, they're coming around. He's in there. Oh, yeah. Y'all better hurry up. They are cash about it. They're full and I'm not that was a yacht club, but they were using that for building. Oh, were they? Look, they're closing up, those people still aren't running. Y'all, come on now. There you go, there you go, there you go. So that lady must have just walked right off of that ledge. Yeah, she wasn't paying attention. Where? 
That guy? Yeah, he looked right here and he's like, what the? Oh no, bro. Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. You got this. Just read. You don't even have to read. There's big pictures. No, no, no. Right there. Go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. He's got it. He figured it out. There you go. No, no, no. No, he's got it. He's got it right there. There you go. Good job, bud. Proud of you. Look at all of those people. Just so casual about it. With a kid, I'd be freaking out. Come on, bro. Hey. Oh, there's people running over there too. Run. Good job, bud. Oh, we got one kind of runner. Good job, bud. I didn't even see him. Button. As we were leaving, actually, we are leaving right now. Some sort of delegation or armored cars passed by. Maybe it was the president of Malta. Who knows? But there we are pushing away from the port in Valletta. And it was a beautiful sail out. Perfect weather. The sun was setting. And you could see. The ancient, the new, the remodeling boats, people were waving and yelling at us, saying goodbye, come back. It was very beautiful, and I think one of my favorite sailaways of all time on a cruise ship. Look at that right there. I just can't. It, it doesn't do it justice, the camera or any filtering or any kind of uh, whatever, photoshopping. There I am. <laughs> But look at that, it's just, I, I've never seen anything like this in person and it just blew my mind. The Mediterranean is truly beautiful. Uh, and I can't wait to go back, but let's enjoy this uh, sail away. Goodbye everybody, they're waving at us. That is where we ate before we went down the elevator. That is the park up there. It's a beautiful spot, really beautiful.
we're here at Masters of the Seas. This is one of the bar slash like specialty restaurants on board. Um, they have a pretty limited kind of English pub menu, um, but it has a few of the American staples. So for example, I got the Philly cheese steak, which looks pretty good. And then you got like a barbecue sandwich, right? Pretty much, full uh, brisket. And then mistakenly, we didn't read the menu. We also ordered fries, so both of our meals came with fries. So that's okay. Um, a lot of fries. Really good. A lot of fries, but the prices weren't that bad. Um, the fries were about five dollars. The sandwich was about nine or eleven, somewhere in there. Yeah. So really, uh, really not bad. A really large amount of food. So that's pretty good. I mean, is it a Philly cheesesteak from Philly? No, but it's still really good food. MSC embraces the ducks. <laughs> This is sweet. So the gentleman at customer service that was helping us the other day, we had told him about our room being an ADA room, an accessibility room. Anyways, he sent us these, which, yum. Okay, I'm gonna eat those. And then he also sent us some, looks like, oh, Prosecco. Very nice. So we shall be enjoying that this evening. Well, the reason why he sent us this is because after we told him we had an ADA room, we also stated that we didn't need it. But he said that was very generous of us to be willing to vacate this room for somebody in need because of the mainly the level terrain it gives you. There's no bumps into the shower or anything, as well as there's a ramp on the balcony. And he said, that's very nice. And I will send you up a gift, basically. So that was very, very, that's a big gift. So thank you. We, we really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, MSC. Thank you. Malik in particular. Thank you so much for watching and joining us here in Malta, my favorite place in the Mediterranean so far. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye.